Good day everyone, this is Joshua Smith with the PCBSD YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be bringing you guys another tutorial, uh, not necessarily on PCBSD itself, but on TrueOS. Uh, what is TrueOS? TrueOS is basically a uh, version of FreeBSD that the PCBSD guys have um, uh, made a configuration script for. It's a, a rather complex script that will allow you to um, go ahead and set up your disk layouts, um, let you go ahead and select what kind of bootloader you want, um, encryption, all that good stuff, but in a text installer and in a more FreeBSD friendly uh, type of setup. So um, with that being said, let's get right to it and I'll show you guys what we've done to uh, get started. First things first, I uh, went to download.pcbsd.org and once there I went into the uh, 10 one ISO directory and I downloaded the latest edition of TrueOS which is going to be the RC1 image that has a date of 10-16-2014. So that's the one that I, I am using for this tutorial. Okay, great. Um, now I already have it downloaded so if you guys want to download that and follow along you guys can pause the video now. But We are going to go ahead and flip over here over to VirtualBox. Alright and as you can see I have my uh, PCBSD virtual machine here and I, I've already changed under settings I went ahead and selected the TrueOS install so we're going to be removing that PCBSD that's on there and installing TrueOS instead. So let's go ahead and click start. We don't need that. And this is the first thing you're going to see. This is going to just say text install emergency console. You can let it time out or you can just go ahead and press enter and continue. TrueOS is basically just FreeBSD rebranded. Uh, we've taken FreeBSD and built on top of it with an installation script. So um, it's about as close as you can get to having a GUI uh, without actually having a GUI. Uh, it's going to be a menu based uh, install module. So we're going to let all this stuff go by and there we go. All right, let's see if we can make this box just a little bit bigger here. Uh, da, 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 da. Just go ahead and switch to full screen. Why not? All right. Now, you'll see here that it says you can start the text install use the system utilities or reboot the system all fairly straightforward and generic um, answers right here if you select the utilities there's just a couple of little things here that you can do um, nothing that we need to mess with at the moment but some good utilities if you do get stuck and uh, your systems unbootable or something of that nature so we're gonna go ahead and press start text install by pressing enter on the highlighted option we are going to go ahead and select our VirtualBox hard disk. And we're going to select Use Entire Disk. Now when you select Use Entire Disk, it's important to note the next option it's going to give you is what kind of disk layout do you want to use. If you are not using a full disk um, setup, if you're not installing TrueOS to, to an entire disk, it won't ask you this option. It's going to take whatever your layout is and proceed with that for you without changing it. So that's important to remember. but. Um, just for the sake of this demonstration, we're just going to go with GPT. And we are going to take the Grub installer. Full disk encryption. We don't necessarily need that on this machine, but for those of you that want it, that option is there. So I'm going to put no, but you are welcome to put yes if you'd like. So here, just go ahead and enter a password for your root user. Now we're going to set up our um, our actual user account. So I am going to put Josh DW19.
All right, my real name, there you go. Great, okay, now we can select the user shell. Um, for me, I'm just gonna go with bin slash sh. Now this is a new option we've added now, which is gonna make your life a heck of a lot easier. Do you wanna set up networking now? Um, for me, absolutely, I wanna go ahead and set up networking now. Um, you can go ahead and enter a system host name. So we will just say true OS server. Okay, and then it's gonna kick over here, and this is kind of redundant, but you just press yes. It pushed you into the networking menu. Um, but yeah, just go ahead and press next, and we can proceed with setting it up. Okay, and then we can just go ahead and press automatic DHCP, because I don't wanna change any of the defaults there. Um, for this demonstration, we do not need SSH, so I'm gonna press no, but that is an option for you. Now this is something really cool guys that we just added. Um, do you want to enable remote access to the App Cafe browser based package manager now? You will be asked to set up an additional username and password. Uh, what it's talking about is we added a feature called App Cafe Remote. So if you go ahead and install this now during the install, what you'll be able to do is to go to any other um, PCBSD workstation um, on your network type in the IP address of the TrueOS uh, or FreeBSD server, um, however you want to, whatever you want to call it. Type in that IP address, it'll pull up login information, say you must enter a password, enter your username, so there is extra measures of security, just so you guys know. But you'll be able to log in from a remote computer and basically control the packages that are installed in there. It's very simple and easy. Um, and I will show you guys the basically the front end of that in another video. Um, but for this, let's just go ahead and say yes, just so I can show you guys how, how easy it is to set up. Okay, enter a username. I'm going to use this username, and we are going to put in a secure password here. There we go. Now on this, uh, enter the port to listen on. I'm just going to use the default, so I'm going to type 8885. Great, okay. Now we're just about ready to start the installation. Um, now you can see here, you have several different options here. You can rerun the install wizard if you feel like you didn't get your settings exactly right. If you need, you can press edit, and you'll get several options for, for editing uh, different sections of the TrueOS install. I believe we did just fine, so I'm going to go back to the main menu. Um, another option here is to check your hardware compatibility. Um, as long as your hardware is detected, it is going to be displayed here. You can see right here it says compatible network interfaces detected EM0, so we know that we have um, um, a detected and compatible network interface. Also, you can see that it did detect sound, a hard disk, and memory, so that's great. So we're just going to go ahead and press exit. All right, and why don't we just go ahead and continue with the install. This will begin the installation. Continue. Yes. Okay, great. We're off and running. So we're going to give this just a few minutes here and run. And uh, we will come back to it And uh, uh, once we see how long it's going to take. Generally, a TrueOS install is much faster than PCBSD. It's a much, much smaller footprint. Uh, you're talking about 600 megabytes compared to about 3.5 gigabytes, so quite a bit smaller. We do literally try to preserve um, the functionality of FreeBSD. There's very little that's different um, with it. Basically, our aim is just to try to make it a little bit easier. I don't know if you guys have ever set up FreeBSD on your own, um, just out of the box. 
For some of you guys, if you're just like really amazing, you know, you guys uh, have been doing Unix for a while, it's probably not going to be too difficult for you to set up FreeBSD. Uh, but for guys like me that came from uh, uh, the dreaded Windows background, <laughs> it, it, it may be a little more difficult. Um, so that's a, that's our aim here, is we're trying to take what's great about FreeBSD and just make it easier and more accessible, uh, maybe for other server admins that may not have as much experience. Okay, great. It says it's installing the packages. It says it is cleaning up now. We are getting close to the end, so that's good. That warning is okay. That's uh, just a generic warning right now. The the local host name has not been set um, yet during the install, but but rest assured it will be. And we are to the unmounting phase, so it is just about ready to, to restart. Just going to let it finish this section and it will be ready to restart here momentarily. So, hopefully, this will make your guys' uh, lives a little easier, even if um, you know you are extremely experienced with FreeBSD. You may find that this is a lot faster to set up um, your FreeBSD installs when you're rolling them out. So Keep that in mind. All right, it looks like it is done. So now we can go over here to quit. <clears throat> and we are going to reboot. Let's go ahead and unmount that DVD uh, when it's ready here. There we go. All right, and here's our first boot of the FreeBSD slash TrueOS install. We don't need all these helpful bubbles, although I'm sure they're helpful to some. Okay, and there you go. You see it did set the, uh, the host name for the system, so that's great. Looks like it just set up all of the IP information. Okay, great. Here's our login screen. So let's just log in with our user. Okay, and there we are. We're logged in. Thanks so much for watching, guys. There is going to be a second part to this video, so keep that in mind if you want to come back and see the front end to the App Cafe remote, uh, that new feature we were talking about that we put in. Uh, just keep an eye on the YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button if you like what you see. Thanks, guys. Bye.